What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. We are about to go send it on the sea dews out down to Laguna to do a mission that we failed the last time we tried. But before we do that, I realized that I've never done a video where I actually run through all of the safety equipment and stuff that I take with me when I go and do these offshore sends. So that is what this video is all about. So first thing is first, anytime you're out in the water, obviously you want a really good life jacket. Now, I've been rocking the sea Do life vests since I got this thing, and they are great, super comfortable, they look great. They're also neon yellow as well, which I approve of. But I wanted something that would allow me to attach some of the other safety gear that I take with me, radio, EPIRB knife, stuff like that. I am probably gonna be adding some more stuff as well as time goes on. So I just picked up this Mustang survival vest. I paid for it, this isn't sponsored. I actually haven't even worn it yet, but the reviews are great. And this is actually a rest rescue swimmer's vest, which means that it has super high buoyancy and the ability to move around when you're in the water. And obviously I'm hopefully never gonna have to do that, but when I'm on the ski, it means that I'm not gonna be encumbered. So it's a super nice jacket. And on here, we'll get through to some of the most important stuff that I carry with me. So number one is this radio. So I use this, this is the ICOM M93D. Now, I do know that they have discontinued this model and there is a newer one available. So I do wanna give you the link to the newer one because you can't buy this. All of the stuff I'm showing you will be linked in the description below. This is a brilliant radio because it has a distress button on the back. So this has Jordan, JD Jordan's filming this for me by the way guys. Is it MMSI? Okay, MMSI, which is basically this radio is linked to me. So if I was ever to go in the water, pop this distress button, it has a built-in GPS, it will send out a distress call, people will know that it's me, people will know where my location is, all from a radio. So one of the other really important things that I carry with me on my person at all times is this PLB. Now what this is, is a personal location beacon, and basically if I was to go in the water, I would pop this antenna out, I would push this button, and again, this is kind of the same as the radio. Now. A lot of you watching this, especially if you are proper boaty people, will think that I'm way overkill and I have way too much safety gear. Jordan's nodding. And what I will say to you is, I would rather be the guy that has it and doesn't need it than the guy that needs it and doesn't have it. You know, let's say the radio dies, the battery in that dies, that's gonna stop them from locating me. This thing is kind of a one use thing. When you're in trouble, you hit the distress button and that is your location beacon. So I do have a lot of um, redundancy measures in place because I am terrified of sharks. And so the worst thing for me would be to be in the middle of the ocean floating around with sharks out there. So now I love sharks, but I'm terrified of being eaten by one. So I wanna be found as quickly as possible. So that's why I also have this PLB. Also, I can use this if I go hiking or if I'm camping out in the middle of nowhere. I can carry this with me and it's the same type of thing. It would send out a beacon that they can get picked up by helicopters or local rescue team, whatever. Um, so that's a good thing about that. I do keep it on my life vest at all times, but if I wanted to, I could take it elsewhere. Now, the next thing I've got on this jacket is my balloon killer. So this is just a cheap pocket knife. Uh, it's getting rusty now because it gets sprayed so much, but it is still sharp and it does still work. But mostly what I use this for is popping balloons that I find when I'm riding around uh, and uh, yeah, putting them somewhere about the ski to get them out of the ocean. Uh, but also just handy to have a knife. If you get snagged in a line or something like that, or you have to like harpoon some seaweed because I'm vegan, so I'm not gonna harpoon a fish to survive. How long do you think you can survive on kelp? I think I'd do pretty well just like on kelp. Apologize guys about my profuse sweating. It is a thousand degrees right now and I am on concrete with no shoes on. So yeah, you'll just have to forgive me for that. All right, let's get into more of the safety equipment and Rather than spearing a fish, I do always take food with me when I go and do any kind of like offshore sends. And I do joke and say that I think I would be the only person that would get lost offshore and come back having put on weight because I carry so much stuff with me when I go and do these kinds of trips. So that is obviously what I have on my person when I'm out riding this thing. Uh, in terms of riding gear, I wear a wetsuit. This one's by a company called Slippery. I don't know why they decide to call themselves that, but it is the best riding wetsuit that I could find online. Uh, it's just like a bib, so it doesn't have arms. So I normally will wear a compression shirt, like a rash vest over the top of it, then the uh, life jacket. And that's just the most comfortable that I am riding when it's hot, riding when it's cold. These things really do help. So I do see a lot of people riding in board shorts and t-shirts, but I don't know, when I'm out doing like Sandy Sends, I just like to wear a proper wetsuit. Um, and this has got like nice knees. So as you can see, I can sit and contour to positions like this very comfortably. Uh, then I also do have my sea -Doo riding boots, which I am due a new pair of these because I've beat these things up and then I do have a new pair on the way. Um, but I just feel so naked now riding without 
gloves and boots. It's so weird. If I'm on at sea -Doo and I don't have them, it's like, I don't know, I just, it just, it's, it's weird to me. So I love riding with those. Like I say, I also have gloves as well. Um, and then under here is where some of the additional safety equipment is. Uh, so these are the gloves that I ride with. They're just kind of like very thin mountain bike gloves. They just give me a bit of grip and also on longer rides, stop you from rubbing on uh, the handlebars. Um, but yeah, let me show you some of the stuff that I've got up front here. Number one, we have first aid kit. So this is survival kit. So this thing has things to stop bleeding. So we have tourniquets and we have all kinds of stuff that would uh, help you if you were to say, you know, get injured, hit your head, fall into the water, get a cut, something like that. This is gonna get you by and at least be able to stem any bleeding that you've got or stabilize any type of break. There's slings in here. Um, there's also like antibiotic cream so that whatever, if you were to get washed up on an island, it's very small, very compact, but it has a lot of goodies in here. Uh, then I also carry a spare mask. This is one of my old dive masks. I always carry this around because if I do suck something up into the intake and I have to jump in the water and clear it out, much easier to do when you can see what you're doing. So this is always in there. And like I said, we are about to go out on a fun send uh, out of here, which will be in next week's episode. So stay tuned for that. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. So I'd love to see you here again and show you what we get up to. Um, but I also have my dive mask and snorkel with me as well. But this lives on the sea -Doo. Uh I have a battery powered suction cup navigation light. So when I'm riding and it's dark, I can put this on the front and people can see which way is which and more importantly, the Harbour Patrol don't mess with me because I have the correct stuff. I also have another pair of gloves here. Again, this is if I have to pull anything out of the, um, let's wait for that private jet. So I have a second pair of gloves and that way I can taunt Jordan when uh, he starts to get his little boo-boos right here. And I'm like, Do you want the one? Gone. Another important thing, flare. This is important. This is actually probably the most important thing for me to have in here because this is the only piece of safety equipment I have ever relied on to date. That boat that sank like a mile off of the harbor entrance. We're learning more about this boat that sank off the Newport Beach Harbor. A rescue operation off the coast of Newport Beach after a boat carrying 14 people started taking on water near the harbor. People on board of a boat off Newport Harbor had to be rescued, among them an 82-year-old man. I struck a flare because the uh, lifeguard or the coast guard couldn't see which boat it was that was in distress because there was a big boat in front of it. And so I had a flare and I lit it and it was so much fun. So yeah, the, uh, the flare is definitely an important one to make sure that you can be seen. They are super bright even in daylight. So definitely well worth carrying flares. And then obviously some sunscreen as well. That really helps uh, just to keep days like this from absolutely frying you. I said redundancy. So I have an offshore life vest as well. So this is actually a size too big for me. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to put it over the top of whatever life jacket I was wearing. So if I literally need to float because I can't kick or swim or whatever, then I have multiple ways to keep myself afloat. This is always in here when we're doing these long sends because you never know. Also, if you were ever to find someone who was out in the water, who maybe whatever, you, I just like to be, do you get this? I like to be prepared. Does this? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you're kind of seeing the pattern here. This is probably the most over the top thing that I have because this is an EPIRB. So this thing would be thrown into the water and float around. And again, so you switch this, hit the button. This is like the big daddy. I don't think I know anybody else that has a sea -Doo that has one of these. I think everyone just runs the PLBs. But when I was looking for safety gear, it actually came as a pack. So I got this and the PLB all together. I think it was like 700 bucks, something like that, which sounds like a lot, but honestly, I would rather have it. And you know, like I say, never need it. Um, so I do have an EPIRB and then in here as well, there are some other goodies. Uh, I actually think I have, yeah. So additional flares in here. Um, and then this is kind of cool. I don't think I've ever showed you this, Jordan. Um, so I have some binoculars that I've literally never used. So I was like, oh, when I go offshore and go whale watching, I can have these snazzy fancy pants binoculars. This is how long I haven't used them for. Like the rubber is literally getting worn in the bag because they've been in there so long. So John just made a good point. Um, these things also will, when they get wet, will activate. So if you just throw this in the water, you don't even have to push it. It will just send out the emergency signal uh, straight away. So that's another really good reason to have an EPIRB. And Jordan said that he actually has one on his dinghy. So 
They're not just for big boats, um, but definitely this is a considered effort, right? If I was to get ejected from the ski, this lives in the front. I'm not gonna be able to like, you know, or might not be able to swim back in and get it. Hence the PLB that's always on my body. But if I was just floating around, no power and needed help, throw this in the water, lay back, get a suntan, enjoy some of the snacks that I will have bought and wait for the, the boys to show up. This pouch right here, which did contain flares, now doesn't have them because the flares live in here, this has water in it. So I have these long life water packets, as well as just bringing bottled water with me on all of the trips that I go on um, as well. But I just have those in there just in case I was to have drank all this or you know forgot it. And then obviously fire extinguisher. You should not be out on the ocean on anything without a fire extinguisher. I just feel so good having all of this stuff on here because like I said, it means that pretty much in any given situation, I know that I'm either able to help myself or help someone else. So that is everything I've got. I have the GPS as well, the fish finder on here, that's stock on the Fish Pros. And then on the back, we have the double link system. So right now I said we're going out for a send. So I've got some camera gear in here. And actually I have the anchor in the ice chest right now because it was the best thing to carry it because we are going to be anchoring up. Um, but yeah, I have tons of storage on the back here as well to take stuff. Jordan's gonna be riding the GTI. He's got a little ice chest on there as well because the most important thing to Jordan when he's doing these dangerous off-road adventures uh, is that he's able to have a nice cold beverage. We have to get in the water because I have to get Jordan back to his wife in a few hours. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it very interesting and informative. This is what I take with me to stay safe when I'm out in the ocean riding. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for next week because it is gonna be a fun episode. Uh, Everything will be linked in the description so you can pick up your own if you want them. Um, and I think that's about it. Anything to add, Jordan? Nope. Ready to go out? Yep. Me too. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We are so close to 100,000 subscribers. The channel seems to really have taken an upswing in the last few weeks, and it's all because of you. So thank you so much. Subscribe, like, share this with your friends. If anyone is thinking about coming and riding out here in Newport Beach, hit me up on Instagram and you can join the Sea-Doo Senders group. We've got about 40 of us in there now that can all come out and ride and have adventures and stuff. So yeah, we're getting a good little community. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, until next time, don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya.